Well, I'm down on the south coast of England in Brighton, a city with a large gay community. And it's here that Kick It Out have organised an event looking at the problem of homophobia in the game. The event is taking place in association with the Justin campaign, named after the former player Justin Fashionu. Fashionu came out as homosexual in 1990. Eight years later, having received a great deal of hostility, his life ended in tragic circumstances. Found dead in an East London garage, the former footballer Justin Fashionu. Justin Fashionu has been found dead in a garage in East London. It's understood he died of strangulation, but the results of a post-mortem... One of the men behind this event involved. in Brighton is Jason Bartholomew Hall, the founder and director of the Justin campaign. It's ridiculous to think that there is no gays in football. The only reason we perhaps think there aren't any gays in football is because there's absolutely nothing talked about around the issue. That's why we felt that there was a need for Justin Fashionu to sort of be the figurehead of our campaign to remind the world that yes, there has been a gay player and there will be more. Not a lot seems to have changed since Justin Fashionu came out. Do, do you think much will change in the next 10 years? It's interesting to say if if there were several players that decided to come out I think that is when um, attitudes and dealing with policies around the issue will change quickly. I think that is primarily what I, I believe would be the quickest way to making it visible and changing the climate of, of of football, I suppose. Of course, which is eventually. Eventually, that's the stage that we want to get. Well, here inside the stadium of Brighton and Hove Albion, there's a lively debate going on. A recent survey of over 2,000 British football fans found that seven out of ten have heard homophobic abuse directed at players during a game, and over half of them feel authorities do not do enough to tackle homophobia. Among the audience is the former Tottenham, Brighton and Crystal Palace defender Gary O'Reilly, who played alongside Justin Fashionu, and I asked him if he thought there was homophobia in the dressing room. I don't think it's as bad as people might imagine. I know that we all had a strong feeling that Justin was, uh, was homosexual, but that was never once an issue within the dressing room. Justin never brought that into the dressing room and we didn't have a problem. Um, homophobic chanting is another, another side of, uh, of this homophobic issue. And I think if you take out a great deal of good banter, then you lose a lot of the atmosphere within a, within a football stadium. I would like that to stay. But some of the really vile and nasty abuse that can, not always, can emerge, that could be eradicated and the sooner the better. Do you think there would be a reluctance among managers to buy players that they know are homosexual? Uh, that is an issue. That, I can imagine, would be a, a big issue. However, if an extremely high-profile, extremely talented player were to become openly gay, that might change. That just might change, but I can imagine that's a wee while away. I'm Paul Hayward, the Chief Sports Writer of The Observer. There is a little tide, actually, outside of football. There is, a, there is a shift towards people being less secretive, less ashamed, if you like. The Welsh Rugby Union referee Nigel Owens has just written an autobiography in, in which he described a, a suicide attempt when he was struggling to come to terms with his own uh, homosexuality. And in, in, a, in a Welsh uh, village, in a rugby union environment, you could imagine why that would be particularly difficult, because rug rugby is a particularly macho game, if you like. And um, equally, the, the, the goalkeeper of the Cork hurling team, I understand, has just uh, come out in his autobiography as well. But we haven't seen it yet in football, and I think it's still uh, quite a long way off. It, it, it requires clubs, really, to, to create a, a, you know, a, a tolerant and, and um, an open atmosphere that, so that people have the, feel they're in a safe environment to, uh, to, to talk about their sexuality openly. Well, Daniela Verps is the coordinator of the Football Supporters Europe Network and I asked her if there was more tolerance for homosexuality in the game elsewhere in the world. Uh, 
No, <laughs> not as far as I'm aware. Obviously, there are um, some clubs where, for example, in Germany, a second division club where the president is gay. Um, he's an um, an actor and uh, owner of a theatre and stuff like that. And he has been openly gay for quite some time. But he himself said, um, so his name is Connie Littman, he himself said that he wouldn't recommend any player to come out at the moment because at the moment the atmosphere is still as such as that they wouldn't be able to stand the social pressure around it. So first and foremost, we need to create an atmosphere whereby football players and officials of all kinds would be willing to come out because football should be open for all. Well, what's been striking is how difficult it's been to get those involved in the game to even talk about the subject of homosexuality and homophobic abuse. And indeed, many people involved with Brighton and Hove Albion were unsure whether holding an event like this was a good idea, not wanting to portray Brighton as a gay club. And so almost 20 years after Justin Fashionu came out, it remains a major taboo in football.